Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. By Anonymous. Wars. By Anonymous, author. Top Secret. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Operations Research Technical Manual. TWSW 7905.1. Welcome aboard. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War, being conducted using subjective biological warfare, fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. May 1979 74-1120. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e., the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e., slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analogue declaration of intent. Such writing must be secured from public scrutiny. Otherwise, it might be recognised as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without full knowledge and consent of the public, uses such knowledge and methodologies for economic conquest. It must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without the loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. Historical Introduction Silent weapon technology has evolved from operations research, OR, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of operations research was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies, i.e., logistics. It was soon recognized by those in positions of power that the same methods might be useful for totally controlling a society, but better tools were necessary. Social engineering, the analysis and automation of a society, requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information, data. So a high-speed computerized data processing system was necessary, which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation. Relay computers were too slow. But the electronic computer, invented in 1946 by J. Presper Eckert and John W. Morchley filled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947 by the mathematician George B. Danzig. Then in 1948, the transistor, invented by J. Bardeen, W. H. Bratain, and W. Shockley promised great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventions, under their direction, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952, the grant period terminated, 
and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful, as is borne out by the publication of some of its results in 1953. Suggesting the feasibility of economic, social, engineering. Studies in the structure of the American economy copyright 1953 by Wassily Leontief. International Science Press Incorporated, White Plains, New York. Engineered in the last half of the decade of the 1940s. The new quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold-plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954. With the creation of the Maser in 1954. The promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen in seawater. And the consequent availability of unlimited social power was a possibility only decades away. The combination was irresistible. The quiet war was quietly declared by the international elite at a meeting held in 1954. Although the silent weapons system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system has never suffered any major setbacks. This volume marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Quiet War. Already this domestic war has had many victories on many fronts throughout the world. Political Introduction in 1954 it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades, before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power for the very elements of the new silent weapon. Technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of the energy sciences. Energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically, expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science. And the bookkeeper can be king. If the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue. Who will be the beneficiary? In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace, and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, wealth, of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name silent weapons. In conclusion, the objective of economic research, as conducted by the magnates of capital, banking, and the industries of commodities, goods, and services, is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable.
in order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of society must be brought under total control, i.e., must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke and long term social duties from a very early age, before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government operated day care centers for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort. So that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior classes and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even bright lower class individuals have little if any hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators. But only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations, instead of bullets, propelled by data processing. Instead of chemical reaction, explosion. Originating from bits of data. Instead of grains of gunpowder from a computer. Instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer. Instead of a marksman. Under the orders of a banking magnet. Instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises. Causes no obvious physical or mental injuries. And does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise. Causes unmistakable physical and mental damage. And unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, i.e. Unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon. And therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong. But that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feeling in a rational way. Or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help. And do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts adapts to its presence. And learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives. Until the pressure, psychological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy, and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Theoretical Introduction Give me control over a nation's currency. And I care not who makes its laws. Maya Amschkel Rothschild, 1743-1812 Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered. Succinctly expressed, and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Maya Amschkel Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He, of course, did not think of his discovery in these 20th century terms. And, to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally, the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of the world economy.
General Energy Concepts In the study of energy systems, there always appears three elementary concepts. These are potential energy, kinetic energy, and energy dissipation. And corresponding to these concepts, there are three idealized, essentially pure physical counterparts called passive components. 1. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of potential energy is associated with a physical property called elasticity or stiffness and can be represented by a stretched spring. In electronic science, potential energy is stored in a capacitor instead of a spring. This property is called capacitance instead of elasticity or stiffness. 2. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of kinetic energy is associated with a physical property called inertia or mass and can be represented by a mass or a flywheel in motion. In electronic science, kinetic energy is stored in an inductor in a magnetic field instead of a mass. This property is called inductance instead of inertia. 3. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by a dashpot or other device which converts energy into heat. In electronic science, dissipation of energy is performed by an element called either a resistor or a conductor, the term resistor being the one generally used to describe a more ideal device, e.g., wire employed to convey electronic energy efficiently from one location to another. The property of a resistance or conductor is measured as either resistance or conductance reciprocals. In economics these three energy concepts are associated with 1. Economic capacitance, capital, money, stock inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc. 2. Economic conductance, goods. Production flow coefficients. 3. Economic inductance, services. The influence of the population of industry on. Output. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system. E.g., mechanics, electronics, etc. Can be immediately applied in the study of any. Other energy system e.g., economics, Mr. Rothschild's energy discovery. What Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over people. As applied to economics, that principle is when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you, Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people inductance with people corresponding to a magnetic field into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth. Instead of real compensation, they would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for. So, long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory notes to individual and to governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. That government, which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed. 
by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology made Mr. Rothschild all the more able to expand his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government. Order beyond the limits. Inflation. Of backing in precious metal or the production of goods and services. Apparent capital as paper inductor. In this structure, credit, presented as a pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital, but is in effect negative capital. Hence, it has the appearance of service, but is in fact, indebtedness, or debt. It is therefore an economic inductance. Instead of an economic capacitance, and if balanced in no other way, will be balanced by the negation of population. War, genocide. The total goods and services. Represent real capital called. The gross national product, and currency. May be printed up to this level. And still represent economic capacitance. But currency printed beyond this level is subtractive. Represents the introduction of economic inductance. And constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system. By killing the true creditors. The public. Which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency. And falling back. On whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage, to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computing equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits, paper inductance inflation. Breakthrough The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of the mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a projectile is fired from an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil impulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe, which either vibrations of the engine, or Aeolian vibrations of the wings, or a combination of the two, might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe. In flight as an aircraft, from the standpoint of engineering, this means that the strengths and weaknesses of the structure of the airframe in terms of vibrational energy, can be discovered and manipulated. Application in economics. To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked, and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry, dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer-regulated social energy bookkeeping system. Eventually every individual element of the structure comes under computer control 
through a knowledge of personal preferences. Such knowledge guaranteed by Computer Association of Consumer Preferences Universal Product Code UPC Zebra-striped pricing codes on packages with identified consumers identified via association with the use of a credit card and later a permanent tattooed body number invisible under normal ambient illumination. Summary Economics is only a social extension of a natural energy system. It, also, has its three passive components because of the distribution of wealth and the lack of communication and lack of data. This field has been the last energy field for which a knowledge of these three passive components has been developed. Since energy is the key to all activity on the face of the earth, it follows that in order to attain a monopoly of energy, raw materials, goods, and services, and to establish a world system of slave labor, it is necessary to have a first strike capability in the field of economics. In order to maintain our position, it is necessary that we have absolute first knowledge of the science of control over all economic factors, and the first experience at engineering the world economy. In order to achieve such sovereignty, we must at least achieve this one end, that the public will not make either the logical or mathematical connection between economics and the other energy sciences, or learn to apply such knowledge this is becoming increasingly difficult to control because more and more businesses are making demands upon their computer programmers to create and apply mathematical models for the management of those businesses. It is only a matter of time before the new breed of private programmer economists will catch on to the far-reaching implications of the work begun at Harvard in 1948 the speed with which they can communicate. Their warning to the public will largely depend upon how effective we have been at controlling the media, subverting education, and keeping the public distracted with matters of no real importance.